big one. And there are many other people at work at many other places across the CSG, some 1,500 people in all. We're going to take the cameras up there. This is one of those other places. This is uh, the launch operations site where the launch operations manager you saw earlier and his teams. They're much closer to the launch pad than we are. In Jupiter here, we're about 20 kilometers away. They're about one kilometer. Yeah, this is the CDLS, the Launch Control Center for Soyuz. And like on Ariane 5, the team in charge of operating the launch vehicle from this place is composed of two major groups. Uh, one is in charge of the actual operations and implementation of the various procedures which enable to make the launch vehicle uh, ready for flight. And one is acting as a technical authority in charge of verifying the launch vehicle onboard parameters and addressing any anomaly that may occur during countdown. Those are the parts that are similar to the Ariane 5 flights, but there's a new bit that's been added for Soyuz, right? Yes, the peculiarity on Soyuz is that these two groups are each divided into two subgroups. The first one being dedicated to Europe's European systems, led by Jean-Pierre Baillet on the one hand, and by the Ariane uh, program production manager, Denis Schmidt, on the other hand. And uh, the second one, dedicated to the Russian systems, led by Dmitry Baranov and by the Soyuz program production manager, Valery Kapitonov. In the final moments of the final countdown for the second Soyuz flight on French Guiana, you can watch it on the website at arianspace.com. The excitement here has been very high, you can imagine, all week. It's another one of those moments now, all eyes on the computer screens here in Jupiter, all ears at the telephones as we approach liftoff. We should be starting to hear the DDO La calling out. There he is, calling out the final operations, and this was one of the umbilicals that were uh, released. Yeah, we just saw the drop-off of the umbilical connector at uh, 2 minutes and 24 seconds prior to liftoff, so it means that there is no longer umbilical connection with the launch vehicle now, and for customers, this means that there is no longer actual monitoring and control of the satellites. However, for the main payloads, customers may still decide, as did play out, by the way, to use a limited number of last distant connections through the three-stage vehicle which will remain until lift of time and also after in case of aborted launch for instance. DDO calling out that the electrical umbilicals on the satellites have been released. They drop into a metal basket designed for this purpose of retaining them. I don't know if we saw that or not. But less than two minutes to go. Final countdown leads to the simultaneous ignition on the Soyuz of the central core stage and the boosters, followed 20 seconds later by liftoff. Can you please explain for us the ignition sequence? It's different from Ariane's. It'll give people an idea of what to watch for. 20 engines are lit at once. Yes, uh, the simultaneous ignition of the Soyuz first and second stages means uh, that 20 combustion chambers start to be operated, four on each strap-on booster and four on the central core. The thrust is uh, built up in three steps to enable uh, monitoring of the engine parameters and potentially abort the launch in case an anomaly is detected. The DDO is going to call out the one-minute one mark. So these steps are the following. Step one is the low thrust level starting at uh, A0 minus 15 seconds. Uh, then at step two, the thrust is increased a little bit to an intermediate level. Uh, this is done at A0 minus 7 seconds. Okay. The last checks are performed. And uh, at step three, we have the full thrust, which is reached at A0 and which Large enables liftoff. There goes the gantry. We are ready to go. Watch for that. At minus three seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase, full throttle for liftoff. The DDO will call out the final 10 seconds. We'll let you watch and be back once. Soyuz has begun her mission. Début de la séquence d'allumage lanceur, largage VKM, allumage lanceur. Five, 
décollage. Just beautiful. Soya's lifting off perfectly from French Guyana, beginning her 1781st mission and her second here. Some beautiful shots coming up through the clouds. It's been Very raining. Nominal. It's been raining all week, but the sky's cleared for liftoff tonight, giving us a fine, fine view of things. DDO says all is well on board. 313 tons at liftoff. That's less than half the mass of the Ariane 5, but remember, Soyuz is complementary, not a competitor to Ariane 5. She's lifting six satellites tonight, a total payload weighing 2.1 tons. Ariane 5 can normal. lift roughly a four or five times that much, but the boosters are the first stage. That's another difference between Soyuz and Ariane. Yeah, the strap-on boosters and the central core burn together in this first phase of flight. Uh, the four strap-on boosters, as you could see, are the four tapered cylinders around the central core, each equipped with the RD-107A engine burning liquid oxygen and kerosene. The thrust is transferred to the rest of the launch vehicle through ball joints, which are located at the top of the cone-shaped part of the boosters, each being attached to the central core by two rear struts, which break at separation once the predefined velocity has been reached. Tell us uh, something else about the central core. That's also the second stage, right? Uh, yes, and it uses a slightly different engine, the RD-108A, but it also burns liquid oxygen and kerosene, and it is reinforced on its upper curve at the interface with the strap-on boosters booster. to carry the loads applied by the latter. And the DDO just announced that the boosters was, uh, were properly uh, separated. This is what uh, happens up there. I think you saw that on the screen there.